So what we're going to uh, go over now is the process of fermentation. Now, but before you go over fermentation, you really have to understand the reactions of glycolysis. Uh, and there are a couple reactions in particular that are very important that you understand. So um, all I'm going to do is not go over all glycolysis. I'm just going to point out the very specific parts that are related to what goes on in fermentation um, that are really, uh, in essence, the, the reason or purpose of fermentation. Like, Why does it exist uh, in the first place? So quick summary, glycolysis, right? Six carbon molecule is split into two, three carbon molecules. Before that happens, the process uses two ATP. So there's an investment of two ATP into glycolysis. Phosphates from the ATP are then attached to the three carbon molecule and they come directly from an ATP. Now those two phosphates can be broken off later on and make two ATP. So essentially that's invest two ATP, make two ATP. So essentially from them, if we didn't have, I'm sure I drew a second one here. This is part of what I'm going to be talking about. All right. But if I only have this one phosphate attached to it, then I could make one ATP from this one, but there's going to be two of these because, right, the glucose is, is six carbons. There's going to be two, three carbon. It's glycolysis. Lysis is to sp split a large molecule into these two smaller molecules. And that would yield some ATP. And that would actually yield uh, two ATP coming directly from those um, phosphates from those ATP. But that gains nothing. We don't gain anything then directly from that process. So what's going to happen in glycolysis is an oxidation event. So it's a very important event. And in this oxidation event in glycolysis, this molecule, an electron carrier called NAD or nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. And I cover this in the... Uh, glycolysis one, but I'll, I'll write it out here just because it's important to fermentation as well. Uh, so it's nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. And if you look at that name, you start to think that seems weird because I remember in DNA and RNA, there's an adenine and then nucleotide is not part of DNA. And the answer is yes. If you look at the egg exact structure of this, you're going to find uh, a lot of similarities to the nucleotides that we find in, in DNA and RNA, except this is a little bit different in structure, and it has specifically um, used to carry around electrons. It's just an electron shuttle, goes from one place to another, and it delivers electrons. So now what's going to happen is this NAD is going to come in, and there's going to be an oxidation event, which means a removal of electrons. So this molecule here is going to have electrons removed from it, and that process is going to give off energy. It's going to give off enough energy that it allows a free phosphate. So this is a phosphate that's not attached to an ATP. It's just on its own. It's going to be attached then to the other side of this three carbon molecule like that. So now it's going to be a three carbon molecule with a phosphate on the number one carbon and a phosphate on the number three carbon. So diphosphoglycerate, right? So two phosphates on the three carbon molecule. Um, then, and so what's going to happen is those, those electrons from here will be picked up by this guy, and then he'll leave as NADH. So what's going to happen is one electron makes it um, neutral. A second electron would make it negatively charged, but then that would attract a positively charged proton, and one proton, one electron is a hydrogen. So we make this molecule called NADH. NADH would go on to the electron transport chain but only in the presence of oxygen. If oxygen isn't present, it won't go to the electron transport chain. Right? So keep this in mind so, uh, that oxygen is important. The reactions of glycolysis will happen with or without oxygen, but the future reactions are dependent upon oxygen's presence. And this is where the fermentation is going to come in. Okay. So at the end of glycolysis, what's going to happen is the, you know, these uh, phosphates from the original are going to be taken off to make ATP. The additional phosphates that are added are going to come off to make two more ATP. All right. So we get four, four total ATP made during glycolysis. So we gain two. We gain two new ATP. And if that's the case, um, and we have oxygen, then this uh, will be pyruvate.
which is actually detailed structures up here, um, is going to go on in the presence of oxygen to pyruvate oxidation, and there'll be more NADH made and so on. But that's not what we're talking about. That's the previous uh, series of lectures. What we're talking about now is if there's no oxygen, what happens? Well, if there's no oxygen, this goes nowhere. So I'll write this here. Goes, well, it doesn't go nowhere. I'll just write, it does not go to the electron transport chain. So no, this better, no electron transport chain. If no oxygen. Okay, so if there's no oxygen, it doesn't go to the electron transport chain, which means this reaction will happen if there's no oxygen. You'll still do this oxidation event. And you'll still make these ATP. So you'll still be gaining ATP. So glycolysis can run without oxygen, and you can still make ATP all right, for the cell. But what's going to happen ultimately is this. The cell will start to build up a lot of these NADH molecules. And overall, these NAD plus molecules, their concentration is going to start to drop. And there's not going to be very many left in the cell. And then pretty soon, there are not going to be any NAD plus molecules left. And if there's no NAD plus molecules left, then this particular step can't take place. And if that step can't take place, then we'll only make two ATP from glycolysis total, which means glycolysis will gain no ATP. So there's no point in it happening. And then the cell will die. So if a cell is going to survive anaerobically, so if there's no oxygen, squeaky, here we go, anaerobic, there's no oxygen, how is it going to do that? All right, Because ultimately it's going to run out of our NAD+. So that's what fermentation is. That's what fermentation is all about, is how do we regenerate more NAD plus molecules so that glycolysis can continue. So that's kind of the tie-in here. So we talk about fermentation, you talk about making alcohols and acids and things like that, and those are products, but that's not why the cell does it. The cell does not run fermentation so that it can make alcohols or that it can make lactic acid. Those are things that happen, but they only happen so that the cell can make more NAD. So let's go over how that happens. This is our pyruvate. And there are two major pathways of fermentation. So these now this is our fermentation pathway. So now this is this is uh, pyruvate with no oxygen present. No oxygen present. This is what's going to happen. Uh, there's two possibilities. Okay, the first possibility we're going to talk about here is uh, alcoholic fermentation. So in alcoholic fermentation, there's going to be two steps. Okay. In the first step of alcoholic fermentation, we are going to cut off this carbon here. So what we're going to have happen is uh, carbon dioxide is going to be produced from here. And then these two carbons are going to remain. And we form a, an intermediate molecule um, called acetaldehyde. Oops, that's too many bonds. There we go. That's right. Okay, so acetaldehyde. We have that acetaldehyde and carbon dioxide. So that's our first step in alcoholic fermentation, and the carbon dioxide is given off in a fermentation tubes in the lab. This would be collected as uh, carbon dioxide gas bubbles. Uh, it's also bubbles that can go into uh, an alcoholic beverage from the fermentation process. If they're trapped, then that's uh, carbonating the, the beverage. But acetaldehyde is going to continue, and this is where our NADH comes in. So the NADH will deliver some electrons. 
it will become oxidized. It will lose its electrons and the acetaldehyde is going to be reduced and it's going to gain those electrons. And so we're going to then produce This part stays the same. You'll see this through almost all the reactions. This carbon over here, asterisk by it. You see it's gonna, it stays the same in the acetaldehyde. It stays the same here in the product. Nothing's really happening with that one. It's, it's uh, this one here. It's going to have something happen to it. So what's going to happen then is uh, this oxygen double bond here is going to change to a single bond. And then a hydrogen is going to be attached to it. So it's, and it's not just NADH that's coming in here. In addition, there, there's going to be another proton um, that just comes in for the reactions to take place. There's already a hydrogen here. You can see that, right? But then we're going to get the second hydrogen come down here. So we have two carbons. This is a methyl group, essentially. has three hydrogens attached to it. This one has two hydrogens and an OH hydroxyl group. This is ethanol. So ethanol is a product of fermentation. It comes directly from a molecule called acetaldehyde, and acetaldehyde comes from pyruvate. Pyruvate is produced at the end of the glycolysis reactions, and if there's no oxygen present, pyruvate will not be oxidized through pyruvate oxidation and turn into acetyl-CoA. Instead, it will be fermented. And the fermentation process will, in this particular type, in the alcoholic fermentation process. We'll remove one of the carbons as and two oxygens as carbon dioxide, and then it will add in some electrons, um, and then protons will come with it as well, and it'll have some extra hydrogens, essentially. It's carrying around with it, and this will become an alcohol called ethanol. Right? So we have ethanol and carbon dioxide as products of alcoholic fermentation. We also have acidic fermentation. Acidic fermentation has fewer steps. There's no uh, real intermediate. So now this NADH, same NADH, the one over here, uh, the NADH produced by glycolysis. So this is from glycolysis is going to enter and another proton. And then we're going to get Again, this carbon stays the same. In this case, we don't produce the carbon dioxide. This just stays there, okay? And it stays exactly the same. So this stays the same, and this stays the same. So in acidic fermentation, all that's going to happen again is this number two carbon, the middle carbon, that's the one that's going to be altered. And if you notice down here, that's also the one that down here that's altered. The, this carbon here with the, um, the carboxyl group, with the double bond to the oxygen and the uh, hydroxyl group, that's actually just totally removed. Uh, but this is the one that's actually modified. So it's the carbon number two that's modified. And that's going to be the same thing here. The, the second carbon here is the one that's going to be modified. So instead of the double bond again to the oxygen, we're going to break that and put a hydrogen in there. And then in addition to that, we'll get another hydrogen coming in here. And this is now lactic acid. It's an acid because you can say, well, why is it an acid? Same with this, we call pyruvate, it's also pyruvic acid. Uh, and that's here because you should, you should notice, hopefully, um, that carboxyl groups act as weak acids. They're also called carboxylic acids. And that's because this group here, sometimes people may draw it you may see it different in a book where it just draws it like this in the form where it's already acted as an acid. Right? So essentially, it can give up a proton to solution, which means acts as an acid, or it can bring it back and, and hold on to it. So I'm just drawing it in that non-ionized form because it's just a little bit easier for us to track everything um, when we don't ionize them. Right? But in solution, it just depends. It'll often be ionized, but I think for our purposes, it's, it's easier to show what's going on if we don't, don't do that but I'll point it out. So acidic fermentation uses NADH, brings in uh, electrons, and then we produce, so now here's the part of it, is that will make then NAD+. Plus. Same thing over here. The NADH will come in, give these to it. We make our ethanol, 
But that's not the main point, remember? The main point of the whole thing is that after the NADH delivers the hydrogen, the electrons to it, we make NADH. So both processes, alcoholic fermentation and acidic fermentation, both make NAD+. Plus. That NAD+, plus is what's needed to come in here to glycolysis so that then a free phosphate can be attached to this molecule, G3P, and then we can actually go on with the processes and then pull it back off again, and we could end up with our four ATP, meaning that we actually gain two. There's two new ATP that we actually gain, so glycolysis even without oxygen, can still gain ATP for the cell. So the cell can continue to survive in an environment without oxygen because it's not running out of ATP. It still has ATP. But keep in mind, even though we note and say things like gly glycolysis can work or runs without, a without oxygen, you have to know it's still going to be dependent upon certain things. Obviously, you have to have glucose to do it. And you're, really, and you're also going to have to have this NAD plus molecule. And if you don't have it, then glycolysis can't finish up these reactions properly. And you won't actually gain any ATP, which is part of the purpose of it in the first place. So uh, fermentation, what you should know of it is overall the structure of pyruvate, obviously, because this is kind of the, the, the branching point and jumping off point into actually a number of other reactions. Uh, it's fairly simple. You got the central carbon and then two other carbons attached to it. This one carbon is always pretty much the methyl group. It's always CH3. So you can kind of summarize it, you know, like this. CH3, that's that carbon. It's almost always like that. There's the middle carbon. That's the one that typically everything's happening to, right? And, and usually it has the carbon oxygen double bond, but that's what gets changed here. See, it gets turned into an OH hydroxyl group. And the same thing over here, it gets turned into an OH hydroxyl group. That's because then there's going to be hydrogens put into it from the NADH molecule. Right? And then the first one um, is a carboxyl group, right? COOH. In alcoholic, it gets actually cut completely off and then becomes the carbon dioxide. Uh, in the other, in acidic, it stays there and it doesn't really become altered you know, at all. So you should be able to kind of sketch out the reactions, but the most important thing is to be able to explain, you know, why they happen um, uh, related to the NAD plus molecules. So hopefully that makes sense. But again, uh, if you don't understand this last part of glycolysis, you need to kind of go back and look at that um, to kind of see how this fits in.